we're going to focus on, so it was appropriate today. Uh, both of those areas hurt us. And then we talked also about all the good things. Uh, we, this, this was the most encouraging opening day that, that we have had, I have had since I've been here. I think that there was, the base is, uh, is in place and we will grow from that. Even more so than your, your first game when you guys beat Miami Heat? You know what's funny is I, I showed the guys this two days ago. We talk about we're going to come back with your career best fitness, like we're really coming back in great shape. And I showed the guys the, the however many minutes into the game, it was 19 to 0. We were up on the NBA champions 19 to 0. And we, we won three in a row. I felt like because we, we surprised ourselves in the league, we were in great shape. We were great cardio shape. We ran. And so I feel like, you know, that part of it and um, the base of it this year is, is far superior because of the, the other pieces. Um, the other pieces we've had however many years to try to have our system in place and coach the coaches. I think from a uh, how do we do things perspective, we are far advanced than that time frame you're talking about. What have you noticed about the way the uh, Celtics play and how do you expect them to respond um, in light of what happened uh, Tuesday night? I think that they play, they're going to play more free a little bit. You know, they're going to empower maybe Jason Tatum a little bit more. Everybody else is going to have a little bit more of a green light. You're going to see probably a little bit more offensive emphasis from Jalen Brown. I think that every one of those guys will play probably a little bit more free and loose and be expected to do more. You know, there's an abundance of shots and minutes that are now available. Um, you know, I think that they play hard, they're scrappy. I think that they're very talented still. And uh, I feel like, you know, they're going to come in here looking for uh, for their first win, obviously. Brett, you obviously played Joel more than you thought you would last night. What do you anticipate could happen tomorrow against the Celtics? Numbers, minutes. Yeah, I, th I think it's a good it's a good example last night for all of us to to understand why there could be a tremendous variance in minutes that we all come back and look at a box score and says he played X. Because when he studied, and I sat down with the sports science people this morning, and they're very thoughtful in how they, they come up with this decision in relation to the loading. And you can judge the loading scientifically in blocks. And there was only one section of his loading, his, his chunk of minutes, that they deemed to be in the high area. It was torrid pace up and down. The other times that he came in, you know, it was played at a reasonable pace. And so therefore, when you studied his body of work, and especially the 24 minutes of real-time rest that he had at the end of the third, and when I put him back in the fourth, in their judgment, you know, that warranted he could go play, you know, the last four or five minutes of the game. And so it all equaled the number that surprised kind of all of us, none more so than Joe. But the collaboration and the communication I had with uh, doctors and sports science, sports science people behind the bench, it was a good routine, it was a good rhythm, and I, I get really excited to think that we've done two things. We still, you know, have his health at the forefront, and then selfishly for me and the team and Joe, you're able to get, you know, maybe eight more minutes than you kind of thought you were going to head from so him. So you're playing a fast pace if the team plays a, an up and down tempo, obviously his minutes would be I think so. You know, I think so. And uh, some of that's with that NBA rule thing you hear me talk about where the game just goes. Some of it's related to who you're playing. Um, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, we try to pick and choose our moments too with being mindful of Joel. And, but you don't want to, you really don't want to overthink this. It's, I think, conceptually, you know, if everybody could sort of rally around there's sort of a, a, a plan more than there's a restriction that the parameters widen, the variance widens when you start judging it. As I've just said, it is now judged. Do you feel like you, you understand that pattern like pretty fully when they're explaining to you? Because there's so I much do. science in, involved. And does the loading match up to when Joe's telling you, hey, I am tired right now? I, I, I feel, Marshall, it, it does. Like, and there's a gut feel that I don't need any piece of paper to tell me. Like, I get it. 
and it happened in the third period last night. You know, you could just feel like something went on that made him, you know, want to gravitate to the perimeter more. You know, I think that's one of the the things that I notice when it's just sort of like a three-point line to a three-point line world instead of rim to rim, you know, and him getting deep catches and really wanting the ball at a block that, because it's hard. Life of an NBA big, you start going rim to rim versus like perimeter guy, three-point line to three-point line type of thing. It's a difference of several feet and you accumulate that over the course of a game. That's a hard life. That is a hard life going rim to rim for, you know, 32 minutes. And uh, I think that's one of the signs that I see when, in my judgment, you know, fatigue might be creeping in. One of the things he talked about was wanting to get to the free throw line, live at the free throw line this season. He only got there four times last night. Yeah. How much do you think the amount of time you play was a factor? And do you have to get him the ball in different spots or is that? I think, I think uh, it ties into what I, I said before. He probably, we both talked about it, you know. It's on both of us to, to he's got to get himself down there and I got to help him get there. And I think that when we do that, you'll have a chance to see more free throw attempts. Um, you would think he'll either score or get fouled a little bit more. His, his skill and his mind and his nature, a lot of times is face up stuff. You know, he likes playing out of a rocket step. He can shoot a three. He likes drawing fouls, you know, with that Duncan, Durant, Kobe type of bait type thing. And so if we've learned anything with Joel, it's that he is versatile in his skill package. He's not just, you know, Dwight Howard. He's got face up, he's got back up, he's got a little stuff off the dribble. But in relation to free throw attempts and in relation to when do we know he's tired, I think it correlates into is he on the perimeter or is he in, at a block. Tomorrow's the, uh, the home opener. I know that you've talked a lot about this city, but can you think back to like four years ago and how your evolution with the relationship with the city has grown and what you'd like the town to get out of this season? I mean, you just try to come in and if you're asking me, go backwards and talk about the city and the fans. The only thing that's ever been on my mind is you, you want to come in and you, you want to do your job. You want to do a good job. You want to be, you know, transparent with what's really going on. You just want to put in good days. All those things you've heard me say. And, and it's never did you really feel the pressure, never did you really feel anything else but the opportunity and responsibility. And I feel like after that period of time that I'm confident and comfortable with what we've built, that we can deliver this year's team to a court, knowing that the base is there, there are people that we really like and see a part of the future, and that there's a culture that's truly sl slowly being built and a system of how we want to play offense and defense that's slowly being built. And uh, to me, that makes a lot of sense to everybody else. I get, you know, the, 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 the nuances of some of the things that I'm talking about aren't clear to everybody. But for me, I'm very comfortable and proud of my staff and what we've done to date. And it certainly will be better realized when you repetitively win. After seeing the film of Dario, what do, what do you make of his involvement last night? Just not quite getting in the floor as much, maybe offensively, as people would envision. He um, he had a down night. You know, it's going to happen. Um, I think, you know, he's uh, he's he's done well coming off the bench the last few preseason games. He had some of his best games I've coached coming off the bench uh, recently, and. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I don't personally think it does, but I think understanding his role, maybe throwing him a curveball and putting him at five from time to time might catch him off guard positionally, although I think he's really, um, um, what's the word? I think that he's, he's versatile enough and can change a game at that five spot um, well. I think he's sort of a, something we have in our back pocket that we can use. Maybe some of those things factored into it, but I, I dust it off as just one of those things that happened over 82 games. What did you see from the transition offense last night? Um, I think that I think that we, we always want to play with a higher gear. I feel like the decision on some of the shots that we shot at the end of early offense uh, needed tightening up. I think that we let him off the hot hook at times with some, you know, quick shots that I wished we, we found something a little bit better. But I, I still want to have Ben play with a higher pace. Um, I, I want to act responsibly at the end of the break where we can be a little bit more organized, a little bit more disciplined with what are we doing at the end of a break. 
but putting up 115 points, and I didn't think we played that well offensively. You know, I think the turnovers, 13 turnovers in the second half, four or five to start the third period. You know, like we have the answers to the test. When people say, what's it going to take for you to get into the playoffs? It's Joel Embiid's health, and we got to care way better for the ball. You know, and it's, 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 it's not that entirely simple, but almost. And I thought um, our early offense produced some turnovers in that environment. But with, with Cov, was last night shooting a matter of him being a good shooter and being in a rhythm, or is this new offense giving him different looks than in the past? I think it's his position that's helping him. You know, when you play Cov at a three, he's got two, you know, two um, people that guard, two men and three men guarding him. When you start putting him over at a, at a four, and he's trailing in, and he's playing like running more north-south and coming off east-west stuff side to side. I think that that's what his real history has been. He's been a trail and stretch four almost, you know, his whole life until he came to the NBA. Then can you make him a three? And he can play that, but he has different defensive players guarding him when he's a two and a three. And his 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 shots are coming like pin down ish, you know, coming off instead of going forward trailing into it. I think that has a lot to do with it. You go back and look at his success, him running, you know, in trail and just rising up. People don't think he's going to shoot it. And that new four-point line that you see on the court, you know, our spacing, I think, encourages him to to uh, tap into that skill set. Coach, okay. having a night to digest the film and stuff, what did you see Marco Fultz do? When you talk, talk about him and talk to yeah. him today. I think for the limited preparation that he has had, and for the, and I'm talking about game preparation, practice preparation. He said film preparation because it didn't involve anything physical. He can sit there and study like all of us. But I thought for the limited opportunities that he's had leading into this, that he was better than I thought. You know, he was better than I thought. When you start studying the shots that he made and plays that he made, he was way better than I thought. I think the strength and the quickness and the aggression of NBA athletes where he can get into the paint, but unless you go body, body, ball, his body, my body, and a ball and protect stuff, you're gonna get stripped. And tomorrow night, Marcus Smart will break your wrists. And, you know, Rozier will come in and just snap at you. You're gonna have to be ball strong. And that's the area that I noticed caught him you know, kind of way more off guard than any of it. But he moved on a court, he got where he had to go, and by and large, he was better than, uh, than I thought he was gonna be. You've Last talked, question. Um, you've talked before about kind of looking to take the offense from more vanilla to like adding chocolate and strawberry, that's what you said. How do you feel like that process ben is going Jays. at this point, and are there points where you kind of have to revert back to vanilla and, and don't want to move too fast with it? Well, I, I think that I'm always mindful of how do I get JJ going? you know and what package do you have for him and I think you know he got his minutes but I think he's got to shoot more and some of that's on me and some of that's on just teammates you know recognizing how you do that post spacing at the end of the day if we get Joe doing what I said you know how are you going to handle that um, I think that the base of what we do I, I'm comfortable with on what we want to prioritize and how we do it I feel like we have gone from more of a vanilla level to you know, how do you do things for Ben and Dario and or really Ben, JJ and Joel and, you know, the other people can fall in line after that. But I feel like we're advancing and, you know, points last night wasn't the problem. Usually 115 points going to get you some wins. My mind still goes back to where you know it would. 122 points is too many and the turnovers offensively still uh, are haunting. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.